<laughs> Howdy folks, Brian Cuspel here at Triple B, and today we are back with one of our Triple B TV staples, Mr. Vin Russo, here at the NARBC Tinley Park Reptile Show. And we are going to reveal the truth about blood pythons on today's show. Gosh dang it! And today we're going to reveal the truth about blood boas here on the show. You're watching Triple B TV. Well, Vin, as we were just talking with your lovely apprentice over here, uh, you are a staple on this show when we come to the Tinley Park. Or any show that I see you at, you're, I'm pretty much going to stop you and be like, hey, we should do a show. You think? I can't take this seriously. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> you're the first person to crack. <laughs> it's all right, though. Hey. <laughs> You're also like the first person to bite it. He's trying to try and bite me, man. All right, go ahead, continue. I'm good. I'm good. I got it out of my system. It's funny because the other people I've interviewed so far are like kind of green to this, like to an interview with me. Right, And right, I put this right, in their right. face. I think maybe... And they think it's normal. <laughs> <laughs> put a dinosaur in somebody's face, right? Right, because they don't know what to expect, I guess. Right. You're like, this is like, this has never happened for you. Right. <laughs> But we've done this a bunch of times. This is the first time yeah, I shoved but, a T-Rex in yeah, your face. Usually, usually, yeah, you usually get the fuzzy thing, right? right. <laughs> I was trying to be more mobile, like old school, running around. But That's then, a good idea. Yeah, it works. It's a good idea. Well, uh, as we just spoke, one of the things I'd love to do uh, with you is show some blood boas because you apparently you have you post pictures of them and people are just believing that it's fake or, or altered or doctored. Yeah, I'll, I'll post pictures and people will be like, oh, nice saturation. There'll be wise-ass remarks and, you know, oh, those wood chips look pretty pink or red to me. And then, you know, meanwhile, they're not. They're just wood chips. You know, like one 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 uh, post, somebody was like, those look like wood chips to me. Because <laughs> you know? <laughs> another guy was saying how the wood chips were, were dyed also. Like the snake was dyed and the wood chips were dyed. You know, they're just insinuating, but... I don't know what to tell them. The, the snakes are these colors, you know. So, but I'll leave these open. We can look at them when, when you get a chance. Oh well, I'll I'll, I'll shoot some B-roll afterwards, so you, you can talk about. It. I right, mean, right, right, you, right. you can pull some out now, and then yeah, I'll, I'll shoot the B-roll afterwards, and we'll get. But you know what I'm getting at is, it's really hard to to take a picture of a snake and put it on online and say this is representative of what this is, you know, especially a snake that's red because the the lighting makes a lot of colors change you know like sometimes things are brighter sometimes they're lighter sometimes they're orange sometimes they're red some people don't have the right some people are literally colorblind what i mean by yeah, that yeah my, my son's colorblind yeah they, there's certain colors they don't see as well as like i do or you do you know so what i try to do is i try to take pictures under full spectrum lighting so that people get an idea of what they look like you know and then I also try to bring them to shows, which is easier because then they can see them in person. You know, and then they can pick them out. Like I sold a, a few today, and people are like, wow, they really are that red, you know? So it, what I'm getting at is it, it's hard for me to, to, to get the proper representation of a snake on a photo on Instagram and be like, somebody, you know, do you want to buy this, you know? And people, the problem is they don't believe that they're this red, you know? So that's... That's the whole basis of what I need to reiterate to people. What are, can I ask you what, what you're shooting with your, with your camera? Like, what kind of camera are you using? I'm using the state-of-the-art iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> this interview's over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, so I have an iPhone 6. <laughs> I just use an iPhone. Okay, well, because the, the thing with the using the phone is that it does the white ba balance automatically. So it kind of goes off whatever, like even if you're pointing at a certain spot of the snake or depending on what your background is, right. like it is going to alternate and fluctuate. You, you almost have to take manual control over your camera right. to get, well, that's what I'm here for today. Is I, I've right. got my camera set on manual mode, so we'll get right. a very accurate. So the truth will be revealed today. The truth, we're here to reveal the truth today about blood boas. That's what this right, is. Right, right. That's great, yeah. All right. I'm glad you said that. 
because here I am. I, I have knowledge in photography, but not as much, obviously, as you, because you do this pretty much as almost a living, you know? So for me, I'm, I'm using the iPhone. I'm trying to use the, the full-spectrum lighting to, to, to get the pictures, and I'm looking at the picture, the image in my phone as I'm looking at the animal, and I'm saying, is that the same, you know? Am I looking at the same thing? So nine times out of 10, that's what I get, and I'll snap the picture, and that's what I'll post, so. Well, this is gonna be the true, unadulterated, non-iPhone version of, basically, the, the, the problem with the camera is you can't see with your camera the same thing that your eye sees, because our eye can see a much wider dynamic range of light right. than a camera can, right, so right. there's a lot of things you have to do in post to get it to look back. You have to shoot it, and luckily there's a, a new, type of technology like raw footage it's not new today but it's still new relative to how long film was used right. but you can basically have uh, more information in a file now than your than the camera actually shows you when you pull it back and you can pull that information in post yeah, after with some editing right. tasteful editing where you're pulling back the things that were actually there that the I camera see. couldn't see in one shot yeah. well like I've said before you've got some fancy equipment here so <laughs> yeah, you see that? Look at this microphone. <laughs> Look at this fancy microphone, too. <laughs> you know, I made this myself. It's like a rubber chicken. <laughs> Except a T-Rex. Right. It's, it's before the chicken. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. This is before the rubber chicken, the T-Rex. Yeah, that's funny. Um, well, should we, should we pull out some animals and check them out, or what do you think? Yeah, and there's also one other blood boa thing that I want to look at, too. Um, 2015, I had a pair of hypo Nicaraguan boas. Well, a hypo Nicaraguan and a normal Nicaraguan had a litter, and five of the babies were blood boas. And it, it was like, why do I have blood boas in my hypo Nicaraguan litter? And I'm racking my skull thinking, there's no way there was a blood boa with that female. So I look back on the, the cards. The female that had the babies was a daughter of a female I got from Ben Siegel in 2001 as a wild-caught Nicaraguan boa. And because in 2001, I got a hypo nick and a normal nick from Ben. Bred them, made babies, made hypo nicks, normal nicks, raised them up, <clears throat> bred them. What happened in 2015 was I bred a male son back to the mother. So it was the first time I did related breeding. And that breeding produced some... Um, blood boas, which I have some of those here too. So we'll sh look at the difference between those first generation Nicaraguan blood boas, which are allelic with the original Ron St. Pierre um, El Salvador blood boas, which is where everything else was derived from. So we'll look at that too. We'll look at the difference in the colors and stuff. Cool. Let's do it. Yeah. All right, in addition to the blood boas, you got something else that popped up in your breeding. Yeah, another, another serendipitous pop-up was um, I've been breeding black short-tail pythons for a long time. My brother and I brought in um, a shipment of them in 1991, I think it was, or 92, something like that. Um, Tracy Barker purchased most of them from us. And then years later, I, I ended up getting some back that she had produced. Um, and so I've had the, lo the line a long time, and I've been breeding them probably about 10, 15 years now. And this year was the first time I bred siblings to each other. Um, and the whole litter hatched as these little stripy-looking black Sumatran short tails. I posted it online, and another breeder said, oh, I had those too two years ago. And he had said that somebody else had one years ago when they first came into the country in the early 90s, and he called them tuxedo phase. So um, I had a litter of tuxedo phase, and I brought some today, but it's a, it's a cool thing. You know, at first everybody's like, oh, it could be incubation temperature. But my incubator is very state-of-the-art. It's got alarms if it gets too hot, too cold. It's got fans inside. None of the fans were broken ever. And I've hatched short tails in that incubator for 10, 15 years now. And um, there's no deviation in the temperature. I set it at one temperature and that's it. So it definitely wasn't temperature manipulated in, to get those. Plus, somebody else did it once before, too. So it most likely is a genetic trait. Whether or not it's dominant or recessive, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I brought some of those today, too. 
which is like a new morph of Sumatran short tail, which I think right now the only other morph is a caramel albino. So this might be something newer for people to look forward to in the future. And I have a feeling that when they breed together, we might, they might make something pretty cool, you know? We'll see, I got time. So I brought some of those, we'll look at those too. Awesome, man. Well, hey, man, um, I always appreciate you coming on the show and just taking the time. And, and uh, it's, been, it's been a fun relationship getting to know you over the, the years here. And uh, I just appreciate you, man. I really do. You're, you're a fantastic person to know, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to know you. And oh, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And I appreciate you coming by. I mean, for me, it's to get my word out on what's going on, and you're helping me out, too. And I love you, man. I love you. I love you, too, bro. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in today to the show. Uh, I hope you learned a little bit more about blood boas and just some of the cool projects that Vin has been pioneering for the last long time. Uh, as we always do with our guests, tonight we'll be having a Zoom call with Vin. There's a link down in the description if you want to join us for that. Tune in and uh, ask Vin some questions yourself that you might have about anything he's doing or anything he's done. And if you'd like to do that again, the link is down in the description. If we don't see you there tonight, then we'll see you next week right here on Triple B TV. Y'all take care. I've always enjoyed our conversations too much, and he's always been too awesome when I ask him to come by and do weird things like, can you, can you just headbang while I point this camera at you? He's always game. He's always down. <laughs> Howdy folks, Brian Cusco here at Triple B TV, and oh no, that's not how I say it. <laughs> come on, T-Rex, there we go. <laughs> Don't look at me. <laughs>